Indonesia is endowed with the world's third largest area of tropical rainforest. Covering 67% of the country's landmass. Forests play a significant role in both climate change mitigation and adaptation. Sustainably managed forests can reduce carbon monoxide emissions and, at the same time, increase carbon stocks and biodiversity. Forests provide sources of livelihoods for communities who live within and around them. Global experience shows that sustainability of forests will be maintained if forest-dependent communities are empowered and their tenure over forest land secured. Around 10 million poor communities in 25,863 villages located within and around forest areas depend their livelihoods on the forests. The government of Indonesia must maintain a strong balance between the priorities of economic development and poverty reduction with the mandates of climate change mitigation. To counterbalance large-scale forest concessions granted to large corporations, the Indonesian government launched a social forestry initiative, committing a total of 12.7 million hectares of forests for community-based forest management. The initiative is aimed to ensure economic livelihood for the impoverished forest dwellers, including Adat and indigenous communities, and at the same time, ensure that forests are sustainably managed. The initiative recognized the rights of communities, including Adat communities, to run community-based forest management within state and private or Adat forests. Indonesia Social Forestry Schemes recognizes five community-based forest management schemes. Community forests, community plantation forests, village forests, adat forests, forest partnership. The above schemes provides permits to community-based forest management to cultivate timber and non-timber products, as well as environmental services in forest areas. To support the Social Forestry Initiative, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry recently adopted a regulation on social forestry as a guideline to issue permits for community management of forests, as well as to settle forest tenure claims by local communities and adat communities in a just and fair manner for the welfare of forest dweller communities and sustainability of forests. The new regulation, Minister Regulation on Social Forestry is very important for us to deliver because we allocate, commit 12.7 million hectares, it's very huge. By this new regulation on social forestry, it will be effective to the right person, to the right community than before. The Constitutional Court ruling No. 35, 2012, paved the way towards recognition of Adat communities' rights over their forests. Based on this Constitutional Court ruling, in 2015, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry adopted a Ministerial Regulation No. 32, 2015, recognizing Adat forests as private forests. The regulation delineates the procedures for Adat communities to claim their Adat forests. Under this regulation, Adat communities can submit claims based on accurate boundaries of Adat forests to the local governments and then approved by the Ministry. Adat groups that have been legally recognized by local governments through issuance of local bylaws may submit a request for legalization private rights over customary forests to the Minister of Environment and Forestry. To date, there are already 20 local bylaws recognizing the rights of added communities as the first step 
toward recognizing their tenures over their forests. The first community to obtain the recognition of their Adat forest as private forest is the Amatoa Kajang community in South Sulawesi. The Amatoa Kajang has lived in their Adat area, practicing local wisdoms inherited for generations and preserving their forest as a sacred place. In the very near future, we are going to designate the Amatoa Kajang as Adat forest. The forest has been kept in pristine condition by the community. Adat people have always managed their forest with wisdom and sustainability. To ensure social forestry achieves its aims, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry developed an online map known as a Social Forestry Area Indicative Map, or PIAPS, which describes areas within state forests allocated for social forestry. It is aimed at settling conflicts over forest tenure and supports restoration of peatland and degraded forests. The Ministry of Environment and Forestry has drawn up a social forestry indicative map which clearly defines the boundaries of the areas planned to be allocated for local communities living in and around the forest. This is to give them access to increase their welfare and their livelihoods. The ministry for this program has about uh, more than 2,000 contacts in the field, which uh, consists of uh, an activist, an independent one, who will facilitate this access for the people. A landscape approach involving the Forest Management Units, FMUs, is linked to the Social Forestry Initiative to ensure that the social forestry policy is implemented across the FMUs in Indonesia. FMUs are well endowed with skills to facilitate local communities in sustainable forest management, settling to neural conflicts, establishing partnerships with concession holders or forest-based industries, and facilitating access to finance. There are currently 217 FMUs throughout Indonesia. Social forestry aims at improving the livelihood of the people. For this, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry established a revolving fund facility managed by the service unit of the Ministry's Forest Development Financing known as a BLUP-3H. The BLU is tasked with providing capital for micro, small, and medium forest enterprises such as industrial, plantation, village, community, and private forests, non-timber forest product enterprises, as well as on-farm and off-farm ecosystem restoration initiatives. Ya, kalau menurut saya sendiri ya sangat membantu sekali bagi kaum golongan seperti saya petani khususnya di untuk penanaman pembuatan hutan ya itulahnya. Terus dana itu kan sebagian kan buat beli bibit, saya tanam di pupuk, kemudian dana yang saya terima dari PLU itu sebagian saya investasikan ke ternak, ya sapi. Ya, manfaat dari BLU ini sendiri keuntungan bagi petani yaitu tadi lahan yang saya miliki ini kan lahan waktunya lahan kosong sebagian kan kosong kemudian saya jadikan lahan produktif saya bikin saya tanamin kayak kayak yang produktif ini kan caranya cuma 8 tahun nanti bisa panen yang selebihnya dari sisi ekonomi sendiri lainnya kan saya belikan ternak kemarin itu kan sebagian tapi ya sebagian ya mungkin sekitar sepertiga lebih lah dari dana BLU itu saya investasikan ke ternak. Ini kawasan hutan negara dikelola oleh masyarakat, kelompok tani dapat izin pengelolaan luasnya 29 hektar. 
Tujuan HKM untuk masyarakat bisa mengambil manfaat secara berkelanjutan dan ini karena statusnya lindung, kita mengarah ke jasa lingkungan agar masyarakat tetap bisa mengambil manfaat secara berkelanjutan. Kalau ekowisatanya mulai tahun 2009 sebetulnya, ada tamu itu mulai tahun 2010, tapi dari tahun ke tahun selalu meningkat pengunjungnya. Tahun ke tahun selalu ada peningkatan mas, tahun 2014 ada 79 ribu sekian, 2015 ada 309 ribu sekian, lalu 2016 baru sampai bulan September sudah 311 ribu. Untuk tahun 2015 itu 2,4 M. Masyarakat Kaliburu sudah merasa bahwa hutan ini adalah bisa untuk tumpuan hidupnya beneran Makanya menjaganya juga benar-benar siapapun yang merasa akan merusak akan dilarang Karena dia percaya kalau hutan ini rusak nanti nggak ada orang main ke sini Otomatis pendapatan dia akan berkurang Itu sudah komitmen dari kelompok ini sendiri Dan sampai kapanpun ini akan dikelola oleh kelompok tani Menurut saya Program perhutanan sosial ini sangat menguntungkan semua Dari kehutanan juga untung, dari masyarakat juga untung Kalau kita kelolanya beneran Indonesia is now proud to be one of the vanguards of social forestry in the world.